or church council members. Uh, slide, please. Uh, the church council members, uh, myself, if there's anything you need, see one of us. We'll do our best to help out. We're glad you're here, and uh, it's all about being community, and these are the people who help make it happen. Uh, next slide is just a reminder that Tuesday is Erie Gives Day. Uh, if you're not familiar with how Erie Gives Day works, um, we have a nonprofit foundation that really does amazing work for our city, for our community. It, it is phenomenal. Um, but with the donations that they have already in their, their trust, um, they do this Erie Gives Day where if you give to um, a certain group, that group gets uh, the money that you gave, 100% of it, plus a little extra from um, the nonprofit foundation. So for every $25 that's given to um, Erie Gives toward our church, we end up getting like an extra buck. It's, it's really, it's, it's quite neat what they do for us as a community. So um, if you are going to give to the church, might as well do it through your, uh, Erie Gives on Tuesday. Um, you can do it through a check, you can do it by phone, or you can do it like the rest of the world does in the 21st century and do it online. Um, through, it's all the information's right there. If you got more questions, reach out to Debbie in the church office. She'll be happy to tell you all about it. Um, next slide. Uh, just a reminder that uh, the church uh, newsletter deadline for this autumn, yes, folks, we're there already, uh, for September is on Thursday. So please uh, make sure that you get all your stuff turned into Debbie before Thursday. Just for the record, she has sent me uh, like three emails, a text, and a couple Teams messages because I'm always late getting my stuff in. And uh, don't be like me. So it'll make her a lot happier. Uh, next slide is uh, personal care kits. We are still collecting for those uh, all the way through the end of this month. And on Rally Day, which is, uh, I believe, September 9th, we're going to be doing some Rally Day stuff for our children um, with the children's ministry, but also for the whole church intergenerationally. We're going to be packing up these uh, health care kits. So plan on September 9th being present after worship for just some good stuff to happen. Uh, next slide. Uh, Facebook announcements and other announcements. Uh, in case you haven't seen what's on Facebook, uh, one of the things that, we, that Debbie put up there is the fact that we have news coverage about our food pantry opening at the end of the month. So that's really a good thing. We're really excited about that next step of care for outside of our congregation. The last Sunday of this month, which is the 25th, uh, we will be celebrating our blessing box. Um, it will be sitting up here as we um, say thanks for four years of good ministry to our community. And then it's going to go off to uh, Lamb of God Lutheran Church across from Mercyhurst, where they're really excited to make it part of their ministry. And that following week, food pantry opens. So what we'll do after worship on that day is we will head out. Um, if you are interested on the 25th, do a little procession up to the food pantry and doing a full blessing for that food pantry on our behalf. That's one of the announcements that's up on Facebook, along with a lot of other things. So please take some time, go up there, look at those announcements. And for those of you joining us from home on Facebook Live, we're glad you're here. Make sure you pass the piece through text while this is happening. Are there any other announcements for the good of our time together? Hearing nothing, I do invite you to transition from getting here to actually being here.
I invite you to stand as we begin our worship in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin. in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name god who is rich in mercy loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive with christ by grace you have been saved in the name of jesus christ your sins are forgiven almighty god strengthen you with power through the holy spirit that christ may live in your hearts through faith
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together. Gracious God, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives the life to the world. Give us this bread always. Please be seated. Let us now hear the word of God through our holy scriptures. Our first reading today is from the 19th chapter of 1 Kings. Elijah went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly, an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, <coughs> touched him and said, get up and eat. Otherwise, the journey will be too much for you. He got up, ate and drank, then he went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the mountain of God. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Our second reading is from Ephesians, beginning with the fourth chapter. So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak to the truth of, to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice. And be kind to one another, one another tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, according to St. John, the sixth chapter, Jesus said to the crowd, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourself. 
No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me. And I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone who has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that came down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Please be seated. Uh, before we start on the sermon, just a quick note on the first reading that Joe read for us where Elijah is having a really bad day. Just a note for everyone, sometimes a nap and a snack will change everything. <laughs> I told you last week that this was a two-part sermon. Last week, um, here's, here's the quiz. What was the theme of last week? One. No, they, okay, well, thank you for someone who was here last night <laughs> and had no clue. One. Remember we talked about one was the theme, and it was about being one church, one faith, one mission, one Christ, one spirit that moves us out, one God that loves the world. It was all about the community that was one. But what makes up that community? A whole bunch of individuals, right? So let's talk about us and our part of that oneness. Let's talk about us as a community of faith, um, individually. So... Let's, I, I told you when I, I took the call here that you're going to get sick of hearing it, but this is all about us being the word disciple. You're going to hear that word over and over until it is part of your DNA, whether you want to be or not. Disciple. It's a Greek word, methetes, which literally means apprentice. We are trying to be just like the master. So that word disciple, that word apprentice, trying to be like the master, it literally comes across as this. When a, a, a great sculptor or painter was just the most phenomenal person, students would go and would learn to be just like the painter. They wouldn't learn going, okay, I learned all this person's stuff, and now I'm going to do my own thing, building on it. The true test of a student was to do a commissioned work for someone and they would give it to that person and the person would think the master had done it themselves. The object of being a disciple is to be indistinguishable from the master, and in our case, Jesus. We have Paul writing to the early church here. He writes about what it means to be church because they have no clue. This is all new. This is like 30 years after Jesus' resurrection, and people are still trying to figure out what does it mean for us as new disciples of Christ? What does it mean for us to be followers of Jesus, to be Jesus' apprentices? What does it mean to be church? And so Paul is writing to them, and what he's, gonna, what he's teaching them, we're going to go ahead and frame in how he starts the fifth chapter. Be imitators, therefore, of God. Be imitators. Okay, finish this, um, this, this phrase. Imitation is the greatest form of flattery. If you are imitated, sometimes it's mocked, but that means you did something that stuck out. But it is flattery, because when people imitate what you do, you're doing something that's getting noticed. Parents, I hate to tell you this. Your children are exactly like you. For some of you, it's really depressing, isn't it? When you look at your kids, and they're, they're the best of you and also the worst of you. You can tell them to say please and thank you all you want. But cuss just one time. What's the one word they're going to remember? Right? Your children at their best behavior are just like you. Your children at their worst behavior are just like you. Any parents out there feeling like failures right now? All right. Because you're getting to see a perfect mirror because your children do, they do exactly like you do. 
the good, the bad, and the indifferent. That is you, because they see you, and your voice will be their inner voice for all of their life. What you say and how you say it will be the very foundation they build their life on. They will watch you, and they will imitate you and to be just like you. Now, folks, we do our best, and hopefully our kids will be better than us. That's what we all hope, isn't it? That we want them to be the best version that we could ever be. One of the things that my youth groups always did is, uh, my adults, we, we always instilled in our youth groups please and thank you and kindness. That was a big thing. We would go on confirmation trips about four times a year. We'd go up and do confirmation camp as a church. And so um, there'd be about 35 uh, youth and there were six adults and we'd go in, in the van church vans and we'd always stop to get something to eat along the way. And we're at this one, Carl's Jr. in particular, and my group had gone in there a number of times, and every time there's always an adult standing up toward the front of the line as they're going through, ordering their stuff. And yeah, I'd like a number three, please. Please, um, with, with a Coke. Thank you, thank you. And it, it, it's, that's how it started, and it got to the point where the older kids who had been doing this for a couple of years, would help the younger kids remember. And please and thank you. And we'd go through the line and get up, and this one time in particular, we're, we're there, and um, the six of us adults are always at the end of the line, uh, after the kids have all ordered. And we get up, and the uh, manager goes, and go start ordering, the manager comes up and goes, no, uh, go ahead and just total it out now. We go, but we haven't ordered yet. She goes, no, your meals are on, on me because you literally have the best behaved group of kids that, you have the best behaved group that ever comes in here, adults or kids. Please and thank you, and they always clean up after themselves. Whatever you're doing, thank you. Folks, those kids to this day still say please and thank you, because I, I know a lot of them as adults. Um, and they, they really, as a group, they imitated what they saw they, they became what was expected of them, what we modeled as adults. This is what Paul is teaching here. He's teaching the church what it means to be church, what it means for us to be disciples. Now, Paul is famous for lists. He makes one list after another list after another list. If you like lists, you probably like Paul because he just lays things out in checkbox format. And what Joe read for us in Ephesians is no different than that checkbox format. But what we're going to read about us as disciples is um, the checkbox based out of this very thing. Be imitators of God. This is the thesis for everything. Be just like God. Do things the way that God does things. Now, I don't know about you, but I look at a lot of the modern American church and I don't see a whole lot of God a lot of times. Example. In case you didn't know this, the legislature down in uh, uh, Louisiana passed an ordinance that Ten Commandments will be displayed in every single classroom. You all familiar with that? This legislature, the month earlier, increased the well, um, the regulations for you to get a school lunch made it harder for children to get school lunches, reduced the amount of school lunches available to children in need. Did you know that? Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the Ten Commandments. As a matter of fact, I happen to love them, and I teach them every year at Confirmation Camp. I think it is a great basis for us as human beings on how to treat one another. But the fact that we're taking lunches away from children who are hungry, anyone see a disparity there? This one widowed uh, young mom was in, being interviewed. Single mom now because, well, her husband died, and she has this child, and she goes, how is it that my child, you, you spend money on posters for the classroom because you took that money away from lunch programs for my child? Folks, I don't care what party you're part of. I don't care who you're voting for in the fall. 
Um, that's entirely up to you. What I do care about is if this doesn't haunt your soul, you need to re-examine yourself. Because in this place, in this faith, taking care of people is one of God's most sacred things. Be imitators of God. Taking lunches away from children, that's not imitating God. Here is what Paul is saying to the church. That's not what we do. We do this instead. So here we go. He starts it off. <coughs> Excuse me. So then putting away falsehood. I mean, we don't experience any falsehood in news or media, do we? From people around us who say what they want to say, whether it's truth or not. Put away falsehood. You want to be an imitator of God, put away falsehood. Let us all speak truth to our neighbor. Now, let me put a caveat on here. Folks, you can be truthful and kind at the same time. There are not divergent ideas where you can either be kind or truthful. You can be truthful and kind. It is a very capable thing. Matter of fact, it's what's expected because we are all members of one another. I love how Paul puts that. I am part of you, you are part of me, we are part of us. We cannot separate ourselves from one another. We are all together. That is central to who we are as human beings. Be kind to one another because we're members with one another and of one another. This next one, be angry but do not sin. Folks, it is okay to be angry. It really is. It is absolutely okay to be angry. But there's a way to be angry without sinning. There's a way to be angry without, you know, it taking you down a rabbit hole that you don't want to go down. Now, when I was um, one of my psychology classes back, my undergrad talked about anger. And the professor said, most often, anger after 45 seconds is just ego. It was a really interesting thought to be able to sit there and check that anger. Okay, what is bothering me? Why is it bothering me? What about that offended me or hurt me? And to be able to process that. So it's a really interesting just check valve for us. Anger after 45 seconds might very well be nothing more than your ego. Time to fix that. Be angry, do not sin. Matter of fact, don't let the sun go down on your anger. <coughs> Folks, don't let this sit and rot you from the inside. Don't let this sit and take you where the next morning you wake up and you're still angry because, well, it's... Don't let that eat you. It's not saying that you don't have a right to be angry. What it is saying is, don't let that be who you are. Don't let that make your day and weeks and all that miserable. Because in doing so, don't make room for the devil. Don't let the devil in that little, little crack of anger. Put it away. Deal with it. Do what you need to with it. But there's a point where it becomes the devil's work and not God's. Thieves must give up stealing. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, folks, can I just say, duh? Okay. Robin Hood, no. Thieves must give up stealing. Don't steal stuff from other people. Ten Commandments says this. Okay, but he's talking to a bunch of Gentiles, so it's not necessarily anything more than public law. Thieves must give up stealing. Well, why? Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands so as to have something to share with the needy. Go and do what is right. Go and work hard and from your labors. That gift that you give to someone who doesn't have, that's something worth celebrating. All right, got that, Paul. Goes on to talk about us as disciples, how we have to imitate Christ. Um, let no evil talk come out of your mouth but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may have grace for those who hear. Um, what's, what's the old adage? If you don't have anything nice to say? There's the scriptural backing for it. 
don't let anything evil come out of your mouth. Now, folks, I know driving to church, you struggled with that. I know being at the grocery store behind that person, you struggled with that. I know that newscaster or that person on TV, you struggle with that. It's normal human being stuff. That is why it's here in Scripture, because it's something that we need to work on if we want to imitate Christ. But I love what comes after this. But only what is useful for building up. Only let the good stuff that's going to build up come out. And this next piece. So that your words may give grace to those who hear. All right. Somebody define grace for me. What is grace? The receipt of gifts undeserved. The receipt of gifts undeserved. That is perfect, Wayne. You pass confirmation. <laughs> the receipt of gifts undeserved. So that your words may give grace to those who hear. It doesn't matter whether they deserve to hear the good stuff. Give it to them anyway. Why? Because it might be the only good thing that they hear today. It might be the only good thing that someone said to them. There's, uh, I, I read this interesting quote from a, a school psychologist who said, some children don't come to school to learn. They come there to be loved because it's the only place they are loved. Folks, whatever comes out of your mouth, let it build people up. It's not up to you to decide whether they deserve it or not. Just let the good stuff come out. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God for which you've been marked with the seal for the day of redemption. Folks, uh, when we baptize someone, you have been marked with the cross of Christ and sealed by the Holy Spirit. We do the oil. This is not a new practice by the ELCA. This goes back thousands of years. You've been marked with the cross of Christ and sealed by the Holy Spirit. Do not grieve that Holy Spirit. Well, Pastor, what's that mean? It means doing stuff where the Holy Spirit goes, Come on! It's hard enough already! Do you really need to do that? That's what's going on. Where there's something that you could be doing, the Holy Spirit is moving you, going, I have you in the right place, say the right thing. Oh, come on. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit work through you, not have to work against you. And here's where we get into uh, Paul's really just, all right, running out of space, here's a checklist for you. Put away from you all bitterness, wrath, anger, wrangling, slander, and malice. Let's talk about those really quickly. Put away. Just get rid of it. Throw it in the trash can. Shove it in the back of a drawer where you'll never find it again. Put away from you all bitterness. You ever known someone who was bitter? Did you want to be around them? Now how are people are going to experience the love of Christ if you're bitter and they don't want to be around you? And wrath. Wrath is the anger that you want to inflict on somebody. I know that we've all been wrathful at some point, probably within the past week. Once again, how does that show the love of Christ? Wanting to inflict anger on somebody. Put that away. Because that's not being an imitator of God. And anger. Get rid of it. We've already discussed that. And wrangling. Manipulating somebody. Uh, trying to move them where you want them just for your own benefit. That's wrangling. Don't sit there and manipulate somebody. Passive-aggressively get them to do what you want them to do. Now, that's not the way of Christ. Put away all slander. You know, slander. You know what that is? It's saying something about somebody behind their back saying something about somebody that is untrue. But it's even more than that. It's not standing up for the truth when, when a lie is said about a person. Put away all slander. Get rid of that, that garbage. That's, that's got to go away. Because that is not Christ-like. That is not being an imitator of God. And malice. You know, your anger and disgust toward a person your ill feelings and ill will toward them. Get rid of that, because that is not Christ-like. That is not being an imitator of God. I love this. And be kind to one another. 
Folks, you can't go wrong. Be kind to one another. You can't go wrong with being kind. Look at Mr. Rogers, seriously. Tender-hearted. Ah, oh, pastor, but tender-hearted people get their heart broken and, and ripped and stomped on. Here's the good news. The God that created the heart is the God that repairs the heart. Be tender-hearted. God will keep it tender, and God will keep it whole. Forgiving one another. But they didn't ask for forgiveness. Doesn't matter. Forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Okay? Got it. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children. That right there is the crux of the whole thing, folks. We are to be imitators of God as beloved children. Remember that God looks at you, loves you, and thinks you are the greatest thing in the universe. Thinks you are amazing and wonderful, and is just a dad that's proud of your art and puts it up on the fridge everywhere and has that bumper sticker on the back of his car saying how proud he is of you. That right there is your God looking at you. Be like that. When we go on trips, my youth groups always signed a uh, permission slip, just like their parents did. The kids signed a part about their behavior, and the parents signed a part about medical treatment and their kids' behavior. But in the kids' paragraph, it said, I realize that I am the only member of my Lutheran church that someone might ever meet. More importantly, I might be the only Jesus they will ever meet. I'll do everything in my power to be the best version of that I can be. Folks, that is what we are called to do. We're not called to be perfect. We're called to be the best imitator of Jesus that we can be. Be the best imitator of God because when people see us, we want them to see God. We want to be a mirror where they see God's reflection. That is our calling. That is our work. That is our effort. Help us, God, to imitate you. Amen? Let's stand and sing. Church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You're invited to stand, kneel, or sit as your tradition for prayer. spirit of wisdom to guide our hearts and our minds let us pray for the church the world and all in need reignite the prayer of the church by your spirit root out root your church around the globe in prayer and spiritual practices merciful God receive our prayer we rely on the goodness of your creation in everything we do we pray for trees that offer shade and our fellow creatures that depend on the trees for shelter and food. Sustain the work of all who advocate for forests and wilderness areas. Merciful God, guide our leaders and nations with a spirit of justice and mercy. Let no evil come out of our mouths, but rather let us extend grace. We pray for our enemies. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Sustain feeding ministries and organizations such as ELCA World Hunger and our local food pantries, especially St. Paul's Food Pantry as it organizes and launches this month. We work and pray for a day when hunger is no more. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for this congregation and for all who are gathered. Be present among anyone who cannot be with us today. Be with all who are in the path of natural disasters, especially our friends and family in Florida. Be with all who are hurting, grieving, or ill, especially Vince Belinsky, Jim Berger, Linda Conrad, Sean Conrad, Janet Sir, Emma Cunningham, Liz Davis, Lee Amy, Gail Elmer, Debbie Furman, Mark McGarvey, Pastor Mack, Jim and Nancy Price, Len Toy, Russ Weist, Gary, our homebound members and friends of St. Paul's, Fred Beckwith, Pam Bittens, Laura Danielson, Ray DeLong, Brenda Dolwick, Paul Ennedy, Julie Fike, Christopher Glocker, Sue Hart, Flo Kindle, Ron King, family of Harriet Lapp, Dana Martinez, Tom Matthew, Joyce and Lynn, Liz Morshauser, Chip Roward, Chris Saltonstall, Ashley Stutz, Lee Schwarzfager, Keith Visconti, Carol, Rob, and for those we name aloud and in our hearts. <coughs> Merciful God, 
We lift up these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy keeping. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share that peace. Let us pray together. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God. Through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, and the heaven of all your glory, most high in the highest. Blessed is he who comes. Lord Jesus, the one who called his disciples to be imitators of God, was gathered with those disciples the night in which he was betrayed. There at supper he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Every time you eat bread, every time, remember me. After supper he took the cup, when he given thanks, gave for all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This is my blood shed for you. It's a new covenant for the forgiveness of all your sins. Every time you drink wine, every time, remember me. We remember our Lord in the bread, the wine, and the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. You may be seated for a few instructions. We have uh, both bread and a gluten-free option at the table. As, if you need the gluten-free option, just let me know, and I'll make sure you get that. Also, we have in the tray both wine, which is red, and the grape juice, which is uh, a lighter color. Uh, those are both available for you as well. All are welcome at God's table, and there's room for you here. Come and eat.
I invite you to stand for the blessing. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace.
Let us pray together. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask as you have nourished us with this meal. Now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. So that you can know the actual um, love of God, listen to these words that were written. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. May you live into the promise of the Holy Trinity, one God who loves you and saves you and claims you. Amen. Worship is ended. Now our service begins. Go in peace. Christ is sending you. Thanks be to God. <laughs>